I'm Cooper Buchanan, I'm 18 years old, and I've had diabetes for six years. It was the first day of sixth grade. We always walk as a family down the school for the first day, and I was just not feeling good at all. We knew his teacher, because he was my other son's teacher, and he goes, Cooper's not looking so good. And I said, I know, we just want to come down and get the first day of school picture with you, and, and then we just went home, just on the couch, lethargic, and he just wasn't getting any better. He had a terrible headache, and stomach stuff. The second day missing school, I'm like, okay, you, you need to, we need to go to the doctor. And he checked him for appendicitis and all this stuff. Um, and just said, go, you know, we just got a little virus, so go, go sleep it off. He missed the whole first week of school, went to the doctor again on Thursday. So then Bobby said, let's get him a blood test. The fact that he, that he had type one, it was really our insisting to say, no, there's something wrong and you need to go back and have them do a blood test. And that's when they you know, figured it out and everything kind of got in motion. They said, can you go in a room without Cooper and, and with your husband? They said, did your son have a, a big dessert or, or meal before his blood test? And I said, no, he had like a quarter cup of soup four hours ago. And she said his blood sugar was really high. It was close to 700, I believe. And she said he's probably going to have type 1. So we turned white the sheets. Both my parents come down, and they come and sit down. And they're like, we have some news for you. And I was like, oh, OK. I mean, I, I wasn't like concerned about it, because at this point, I was feeling a little bit better already. So um, and they're like, well, um, you have type 1 diabetes, and you're going to have it for the rest of your life as, as of this point. So. We're gonna have to go to the hospital and you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to like get it all figured out right now. I was like, all right. I didn't really get that annoyed or frustrated or disappointed or anything um, until like probably like half a year later was when I started to be like, wow, okay. It's been a really long time already. And it wasn't a long time, half a year isn't that long, but um, when it's something that I'm doing every day that I'm not used to doing every day. It felt like a really long time. He was really overwhelmed by the reality of type 1 and tried to emphasize the fact that while he is the one that is physically experiencing this, really the whole family is behind him. And I remember Bobby saying, you have type 1, but it doesn't have you. This is not you. You have it, sure. You have it. But it's not going to rule you. We just manage it. We just, you know, we get the beeps. I have it on my phone and my watch, and you know, we, we all get the beeps all day and try to keep him in that window, and I'll text him at school or text him at work. I do believe that we're on the cusp of an alternative. What excites me the most is that we'll have scientists that will discover something that maybe hasn't even been talked about. There's so many different scientists that are doing great research and it, it almost, it's almost inevitable for it too. I envision, like the rest of us, a world without type 1 diabetes. Over the past 10 years, DRC moved from being an idea to an organization that has now funded over 40 projects, over a million dollars, and the return on investment has been 20-fold. And what this shows is that we've been able to select top-notch projects from top scientists across the country to be able to help drive the research in type 1 diabetes. We've supported um, several organizations that are part of the type 1 community. We've focused our efforts on DRC just because we know that 100% of the money that's being given to them goes directly to fund research. And that's really at the heart of what, what DRC is all about. We love supporting the DRC and all the work that the researchers are doing. We're very proud. And we're ready, we're ready for this too. The community needs as many people to be a part of it because the more voices that we can give to this, the, the, the greater the impact.